All right, gonna be looking at some equations of lines here. So one of the super big equations that we talk about is slope intercept form. Y equals MX plus B. M is our slope, B is our Y intercept, hence the name slope intercept form. Write an equation of the line in the graph at the right. So again, in order to find slope, I've got an equation where I take my y value, slope is rise over run, change in y over change in x. So I can take these values, which I'm gonna call x1, y1, and x2, y2, and I'm gonna start by subtracting them. So my y2 is negative one minus positive one, and my x2 is zero minus three. So this gives me negative two thirds, awesome. That's half of my equation. Now I just gotta figure out what's my y-intercept, and in this case, my y-intercept is negative one. So my equation is gonna be y equals negative two-thirds x. I could say plus negative one, but that's really the same thing as saying subtracting one. y equals negative two-thirds x minus one. Write an equation of the line that passes through negative two, five, and one, two. Okay, so again, for starters, let's start by calculating the slope. So my slope is gonna equal two minus five over one minus negative two, negative three over three, which is negative one. And so now that I have um, a slope, I've got to try to figure out what my y-intercept is. And so if I think about it, okay, I've got a slope of negative one. I know that my line goes through one, two. So here's x is one, here's y is two. Let's just continue creating a slope of, so one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So if my slope is negative one, that's like saying, okay, I go down one over one, down one over one right here. But again, I want the y-intercept. The y-intercept is this part. So I can also go up one and to the left one, which means my y-intercept is gonna be three. So I would say that my slope is gonna be negative one x plus three, which you could also just say is negative x plus three. That one is not necessary. So those are the same things. So what I did is I found the slope. I found the slope of my line and then I graphed it so that I could determine, hey, in fact, and if I, again, if I wanted to check my work, I could keep going, negative one, negative two, okay? If I go up one over one, I get negative one, four, up one over one, I get negative two, five, which is correct. So I know that I have done it correctly. Write an equation of the line that passes through the point one, five and is parallel to the line. So keyword parallel means same slope. So if I look at my equation, I see that my slope, according to this, my slope is three. So I know that my line is gonna have a slope of three. So I'm gonna say, all right, I know it has to go through point one, five. So X is one, Y is five. Right here. If I have a positive slope, that means I'm rising from left to right. So I go one, two, three over one, but that's not helping me find the Y intercept. So I'm gonna go down and to the left so that I can find my Y, excuse me, my Y intercept. I'm gonna go say one, two, three over one. So I can see, hey, my Y intercept is actually two. So I could graph this, or I did graph this line 
And then I'm going to say, all right, y equals 3x plus 2. That's my first line. I'm going to graph this second one that was given to me, 3x minus 5. So again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3 over 1. 1, 2, 3. And so when it tells me to check to see if they're parallel, that means pick some points and find the slopes. So again, I could say I want to choose this point, which is 0, 2, and this point, which is 1, 5, and calculate the slope. I want to choose this point, which is 3, 4, and this point, which is or 2, 1, and I want to calculate the slope. And if they're the same, I know I did it correctly. So I'll do that real quick. So again, 5 minus 2 over 1 minus 0 gets me 3. 4 minus 1 over 3 minus 2 gets me 3 over 1. So I graphed it. I picked some points. I checked my answer. And the slopes are the same. Write an equation of the line J passing through the point 2, 3. That is keyword perpendicular. This means, quote, opposite reciprocal for my slope. Okay? Slope is opposite reciprocal to the line K with the equation Y equals negative 2X plus 2. So in this case... My original slope is negative 2. Now, I don't want the original slope. I want the perpendicular slope, which we describe, again, because perpendicular creates a right angle. So that's what that's telling me. And to find the right or to find the perpendicular, I need the opposite reciprocal. So the opposite of negative 2 is positive. And the reciprocal, again, this is like saying negative 2 over 1. So if I flip-flop my, my numerator and my denominator, I'm going to be left with 1 half. So for now, I can say, all right, sweet. I've got a slope of 1 half. And now I just need to figure out how to use two thirds. Let me get some graph paper. That didn't work. We'll just draw one real quick. Okay, so if I've got my grid, that's not very close, that's not very accurate. X is 2, Y is 3. My slope is 1 half, so I can rise up 1 and go over 2. I can, or I can go down 1 and over 2 to the left. So I know that my Y intercept is going to be positive 2. So Y equals 1 half X plus 2. So again, this is like my new line that I just created. My original line, this line right here, would be something like this. Ooh, that's not very, it'd be something like this, which would create a 90 degree angle. So we wanna pass through P and is perpendicular to the line with the given equation. So remember, Anytime you have an X equals, that's going to give you a vertical line. X equals negative 5, okay? I'm not moving left or right at all. I'm only moving up and down. Because if I moved left or right, that would change my X value. So, again, my slope, if it's a vertical line, is undefined. 
So I don't know if you want to describe it as negative 5 over 0, but in order to have a perpendicular slope, again, if you flip-flop these, whatever number it is, you would get the zero on top and anything divided by a, or zero divided by anything is zero. So my perpendicular slope, again, looking at my y-intercept, my y-intercept is six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is going to be a horizontal line. So again, a horizontal line is stated as y equals 6 because my slope is 0. So if you think about the equation mx plus b, m is 0, 0 times x plus 6, 0 times x cancels out. You're just left with y equals 6. So very important to recognize the difference between a vertical line and a horizontal line and what those mean. Last example, graphing the equation in standard form. So in order to do that, I got to get it into y equals mx plus b form, okay? It's hard for me to graph in standard form, so I'm going to manipulate it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my x to the other side. So I have 4y equals 12 minus 3x. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 4. So I'm going to get y equals 12 divided by 4 is 3, negative 3 divided by 4x. Now this looks slightly different than what we have. Remember addition and subtraction, or addition is commutative. Now again, if you move this over, you have to bring the negative with it. So we could say y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 3. That would be okay. Either form works for what we're trying to do because my y-intercept is 3. Again, slope equals rise over run. So I have a rise of negative 3, which means go down 3, and a run of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I could go ahead and graph my line Whoa, that wasn't even close. Let's do that again. Oh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. There, that's better. Did I, did I make miscount on one of them? Let me see. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, three, one, two, three, four. I just can't, I just can't put it in the right spot. I got to fix it. <laughs> okay. That's pretty good there. So I'm able to graph my line equals this. 